We were sad to leave the Southern Loud Group, but our provisions were low and our time was running out. We needed to make it back to Musket Cove for the annual sailing regatta in two weeks' time. We had pushed it as far as we could, but we still had a few things we just had to see before we left Fiji's magical eastern islands, including their single most beautiful anchorage and a world-famous dive. Sailed overnight from Namuka to Vanabalabu. So here we are, just waking up in the morning. Uh, just sailed through the pass. It's quite a wide pass, about a quarter of a mile, really well marked. Uh, we had uh, GPS images of it on the phone, so felt good enough sailing in. And uh, here we are, right with Pooh. It's kind of fun. Another island. We're pulling into, if I say this correctly, Mabavatu Harbor on the east northern side of Vanabalevu in, in uh, the Lao Group in Fiji. And we were here 11, 12 years ago. And I even pulled out our, our old yacht log book to, to see what we wrote about it. We wrote down the names of the, uh, the couple that, that welcomed us to the island, and uh, we're going to see if we can try and find them again. But we remember it being a beautiful spot. We were all alone and anchored in this huge cyclone harbor, protected harbor. And uh, now here we are again with our kids. It's really cool to be in the same spot you have such great memories of and uh, hopefully we can meet uh, this, this nice young couple again. So uh, we'll see, but pulling in now. How cool is this? Sailing in between these two little headlands into this giant bay. It's like a pirate cove. Place to hide your armada. It's just beautiful here. Look at the color of that water. place we took a picture uh, yeah. 11 years I ago. Remember, well, we didn't get greeted by anyone though. We just started walking through the property. Well, there was no one. There was, I think there was a house there, but there wasn't uh, any people there. You travel to see new things, things you couldn't imagine that exist, beautiful places that defy imagination. But sometimes the best memories are the chance encounters you have with the people you meet who show you their world and share what little food they have with you as you talk. Unfortunately, the kind couple that we met 11 years earlier had moved on. They had been the caretakers of the plantation back when few could visit these islands, and now there was a new caretaker. It was a shame, but it did little to diminish the beauty of this remarkable island, and the best anchorage was yet to come. They call this anchorage the Bay of Islands. We tied stern to the rock so we could tuck into a slot with narrows off our back deck. We can never imagine a place like this, and no resort stay in Fiji will take you here. You can only see this type of place if you sail there yourself. And it's this type of place that makes all that hard work worth it.
going up here. What do you think of this spot? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, good. what? What? Yeah, pretty good? Yeah. What do you mean pretty good? Well, epic. Epic? Or you can say what? Legend. Mega? Legend. Legend. Pretty much a legend spot. Yes. having fun? Yes. Did you climb all the way over there? It's pretty good. You guys look like you're having fun. So we are in probably our favorite anchorage of the, all of our honeymoon trip. Uh, 11 years ago, 12 years ago now. Uh, with Elizabeth and I was here in Vanabalavu, the Bay of Islands Anchorage. This place, I've been to other islands even recently this month with little mushroom rocks, but this place takes the cake. This is just absolutely absurd. How beautiful, how cool, how unique, how different, how still. There's almost no wind in here. It's just magic. It's fun to have the kids playing like this is just everyday life. Must have just come up here in the night. It's kind of cool. It's beautiful out here. It's just incredible. I'd be sad to leave. As per our usual scenario, we are racing. <laughs> Leaving the Bay of Islands, we're going 50 miles dead downwind to uh, Tavi Uni is the name of the next island. I've never been there, uh, Ben and Cass have, so off to the next spot. We've got our spinnaker, symmetrical spinnaker rigged. We have not sailed that at all since the incident in the two Motus. So it'll be interesting to see this thing fly and see how we do against Ben. He's gonna be flying a Code D, so he'll have a much rounder asymmetrical sail, uh, which he can pull to windward. But we have got our symmetrical spinnaker, which is a little bit smaller, uh, but we can really pull that out all the way to the bow. So we might hopefully get a little more wind and be able to go downwind a little more than he. But let's see how, how it all goes. And if we can catch fish. It's trying to land on the top of my boat. Get out of there, bird! Get away from my instruments! Yoo! Maybe I do like this sail. So I didn't really know if I liked our symmetrical sail setup, and you don't really know until you can compare it against whatever other people have got, but the setup might be perfect on this boat, which is we've got the tight code zero or reacher or jenniker really is what it is. Uh, for going off the wind off the beam and that goes that can go light air up to about 17 knots and then we've got the Genoa 115% Genoa uh, for when the wind goes over 17 knots and that's kind of a big reaching sail and then for downwind um, dead downwind we've got this symmetrical spinnaker and I didn't realize or appreciate how much tighter of an angle we can sail downwind than if when we have our ASIM up so you know who over there, who, who knew it, is going a good 15 degrees off, and we're gonna have to jive and come back. We're going dead, almost dead downwind. We'd have to jive just a few degrees if we needed to, but we're actually right on target. So we're gonna, assuming the wind stays the same, zip down on a tighter reach, hopefully the same speed. That'll be the big question. So let's see how we do.
Okay, we're three hours in of the six or seven hour sail. Uh, so about halfway, and we're 3.6 miles ahead of who? But they caught a fish and slowed their boat down, and they also had to dodge a reef. So we're not quite sure that this is a, a definite win. Uh, what we'll do, since they've just crossed our track, 3.6 miles behind us, is we'll kind of start the race now and see how much further ahead we are or are not when we get to the final destination. So, so far it's looking good that this spinnaker setup with the ASIM is maybe a little bit faster because we can go a little bit more dead downwind. We're sailing almost 180 degrees at about 170, 160 degrees off the wind and uh, having fun, having fun. Oh, our halyard just blew and the whole main just fell. <laughs> Oh. That scared the hell out of you? This scared the, hell, the heck out of me. <laughs> Can't believe that. That just, We're I mean, just the, sitting here. it's pretty crazy because the Dyneema should hold up. I think we need all new lines. Seriously. Yeah. Whichever country you let us in. Please help us. Incredible. All right, now we're just spinnaker only. We were just uh, sitting here and the boom kind of went slack from a wave and then filled back in again as it does. Kind of in light winds right now. It's only seven knots apparent. So the boom filled back in again and that shock, I must have just stepped in the final straw that broke this back. Uh, I can't believe it just sawed through evenly like that. I don't know what's going on. Or maybe this. Oh, this is the splice. Just figured it out. This was the splice. The splice parted ways and fell out. I guess maybe that's good because then I've got the whole line still. The pin is still up there. That's exactly what this is. The splice fell out. Hey, hon. The splice came free. It was a rigging issue. The person that rigged this line, the splice came unparted. That's what happened. <laughs> it's always something. All right, we made it. We're here seven hours later. And the results are Pooh is 3.5 miles behind us. So with our blown uh, halyard, I think we might have been a little bit faster, actually. So, I don't know, pretty inconclusive. They caught a fish, they had to bear off for a reef. We blew a spinnaker halyard, or a, a main sheet, mainsail halyard. Um, I'll just try it again someday. But we are here, pulling in. The slope like that, see? Oh. But it's very slippery. There you go. Yeah, you just sit down and you get going. Okay. This is Dip. Hey, say hi, Dip. Hola, how are you? Dip's taking us to the water slides. Are you nervous? No. Yeah. You are? No. I'm not You're nervous. You're not nervous? I'm not nervous. Because I like to touch him. We had kind of a so-so water slide experience in the Dominican Republic. Um, fun, but also very cold. Um, you can slide down waterfalls and jump off them. So. There's a, lot, there's a lot of crocodiles in the water. Oh, there's crocodiles. There's crocodiles. And venomous snakes. <laughs> spiders. <laughs> and sharks. There's sharks. There's sharks. There's sharks. There's sharks. In there, I'll just park in here. Okay. Can we walk that way? No, this way. This way. Oh, yeah, this is very, very uh, four wheel drive. Over. All right, we're getting closer. As usual, we're here with our friends Pooh Uanua. Wow! Look at this. Oh, wow. Yeah, back here, back there, and then we go into there. That's it? Yeah. Holy cow. Oh, wait till you see this! We gotta, you gotta come over here. Yeah. Alright, 
They're, they're doing it. There goes Ben. They're quick. I gotta get one of you going. Bit different than uh, Dominican Republic. There's no tourist office. Don't pay anything. It's not as long of a walk. And uh, it's not as long, but same concept. Just as fun. Elizabeth's about to try it. There she goes. Bumpy right there. First of all, we always do this. On a scale of one to 10, how do you rate the water slides in Taviani? 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 9, 10 for what we've experienced. 10 out of 10 out of ever? Eight. Eight. Okay, tough Ten. critic. And Kobe? Uh, 10? 10 and a half. 10. 10. Seven. Oh, God, wow. Oh, definitely a 10. Oh, come on, come on! The Tabiuni slides were great, and it was nice being back in relative civilization. But aside from hermit crabs, this island is probably most famous for its world-class scuba diving. We continued our trek west to the Tabiuni Dive Resort. How many hermit crabs do you have in that bucket? A thousand. Is what? this Hermit Crab Beach? Yeah. Let me see. Show me. Where is it? Now watch where you step. Dad, we have too many. Oh, oh. 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 Oh.
We've done our dives. This is the Taviuni Dive Resort. This place is incredible. A little bit of rain though, but uh, we're enjoying resort life at the moment. We haven't done as much diving as we used to. The issue is that our kids are all under 10, so they can't get their patty cert. So someone needs to watch the kids if we want to dive. On this day, I was lucky enough to dive with Ben, Cass, and Brad, who's 12, while Elizabeth and the boys enjoyed the resort pool. I'd say everyone was happy, but I was happiest. So we'll close out this episode with a little underwater magic from Fiji, and we'll see you next week for the Muscat Cove Regatta. Thanks for watching.